Welcome, welcome, welcome to Boxing Fans Talk TV. I'm your host, TDT. You can refer to me as Miss T. I know I've been gone, but y'all, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I've got to get stuff done. But anyway, I come back as always. Um, y'all see the thumbnail? The fate of heavyweights rests with the Saudis. As they are the ones who's going to be navigating and deciding how this whole rigmarole is going to go down or the showdown is going to go down. We're going to get into that and other things. Um, but first, y'all know the drill. Y'all know it. Let's turn to Welcome back. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing on your guys' end, but it wasn't even playing on my end, so I just stopped the music. I got to give me a new intro. I can see that now. But welcome back to Boxing Fans Talk TV. I'm your host, TDT. You can refer to me as Miss T. Y'all know what I do at the top of my hour. It's water check, water check, water check. Uh, here at Boxing Fans Talk TV, we advocate that everybody drink at least 100 ounces of water per day. No reason for 2023 and beyond. Anybody should have a problem with dehydration. This is the summer. Although I will say this is a mild summer because I live in one of them states where it get busy in the summer. It get hot. Um, I'm sure Texas get hotter. But I don't know how Texans feel about their summer, but I know in Georgia, it's not as hot as it normally be. So maybe it's cycling back around. So, but I'm grateful to that. My lecture bill thanks them. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's the summer. So make sure you drink your water. We know that everyone is not big water drinkers. Uh, for whatever reason, I mean, I can get like that. I do rather drink nice sodas and juice and other things of that nature, but I know the importance of drinking water, so I drink it. Um, we say 100 ounces. That's, you know, shy of a gallon, like 28 ounces or so, shy of a gallon um, of water. And we know that every adult, even people at 16 and up, can drink a gallon of water. It will do you good. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how big you are, how small you are. You know, you could drink a gallon of water. And if you happen to be one of those people that just really can't bring yourself to drinking water like that, then at least two times out the day, you should drink your water. And that's first day in the morning before them toes hit the ground, before you get off into your morning routine. Drink you about eight ounces of water, have it on the nightstand ready to go. Learn how to drink room temperature water. It's all to the good. Think of your body as an engine and the water is the lube, and you know engines need lube. Your body is going to be doing churning and burning throughout the day. You need to, you know, replenish it often with water. It's the best liquid to go into your body. And <clears throat> we know at night when you get out the shower, you throw your jammies on, you're looking at TV or you're reading an article in a book, an article in a magazine or a passage in a book, then uh, we, we advocate that you drink eight ounces of water. You ain't going to go to sleep right away. Even the American Heart Association says 
is good for the heart. Believe it or not, when you sleep, you're doing a lot of work. You're doing probably more work at night while you're sleeping than when you're up moving about. And um, that's why you need the water so that everything can work in a timely and efficient manner. You know, a lot of reads going on, rebooting, recharging, revamping, recreating, uh, redirecting. <laughs> we, can, we can come up with a bunch of reads that's going on in your body at night in the deep sleep. That's why the average person burns between 900 to 1,000 calories at night in the deep sleep. Hey, that's more calories burned than when you go to a workout. I know people be working out hard and they judge the sweat. The sweat is the barometer uh, for them as to how hard they worked out or how much weight they think they lost. Sweat only indicates that your body is working, that it's cooling itself down. That's all sweat indicates. It doesn't indicate nothing else but that. And I know prevailing wisdom or old school wisdom will tell you different. Um, it, it, it's one of those things in life that <laughs> it might not mean what you think it means, but the proof seems like that's what it means. And that's, you know, how people judge sweat, you know. I, I myself was a person who, who judged sweat like that until I read it in the actual medical books. And no, sweat indicates that your body is cooling itself down. That's all it does. That's what sweat does. But it doesn't tell you how much calories you burned or whatever. Now, if you sweating real, real hard and you, we know that, that you had to burn some calories because you working that much harder, you, you sweating real, real hard, but it don't, it doesn't, it's not a good read of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we do know that you burn calories in the deep sleep a whole lot more than the workout because the people think that they're working out hard and they're burning about 150 calories in the gym. If you go on balls to wall, like going all out in the gym, maybe 300. But 900 is more, right? 900 to 1,000 is more. So you want to get your sleep because it won't happen during a nap, this burning the calories. It'll only happen during a deep sleep. And so you want to get that in and you want to drink your water so everything can move like it's supposed to. You understand? Now, I advocate for a mini fridge in your room. I like it because I will store my little eight ounce bottles of water. I also say drink water in, in little bits, you know, like eight ounce bottles, smaller cups or whatever, because you're going to reach your goal better that way. You know, it's, it's just a psychological trickery of the mind. You know, you get you a big old bottle of water and you're looking at it and you don't like to drink water or you're not pressed to drink water. You're going to look at that and say, I don't want to drink all this shit. I'm just, I don't know. It's going to take me out there. You already talking yourself out of it. But you get to like, like, like I got a water cooler in my room as well. And it comes out cold. And I got five ounce cups. And I mean, like, boom, I throw that back real quick. And before I walk away from the water cooler, I was like, nah, I want another one and another one. And before I knew it, just in a few minutes, not even knowing, I didn't drink like 16 ounces of water. Now, when I was drinking, trying to drink 16-ounce bottles of water, you know, in one standing, like grabbing the bottle, I couldn't do it. Even with the 8-ounce bottle, I couldn't back-to-back -back it like that. But with them 5-ounce cups, it's just like I said, you got to play a psychological mind with yourself. And then you also can tell yourself, hey, I'm still going to have my coffee. I'm still going to have my tea. I'm still going to have my liqueur. I'm still going to have my beer. You know, I'm just going to drink it after I drink all the necessary water for the day. That's how you got to trick yourself. It works, people. It sounds crazy, but it works. I see you in here, Jerry. He says, snatch. <laughs> so, also, um, <clears throat> now that we got that out the way, a uh, little housekeeping. Please hit the like, share, and subscribe button. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you already hit the subscribe button, then don't touch that dial. We got you locked in. Uh, you know, watch when you watch me on replay, 
leave a statement, comment, or whatever. As y'all see, I get back with you. Um, it don't matter, you know, I welcome differences of opinions and everything. Um, boxing fans talk at gmail.com, boxing fans talk at gmail.com. That's another way of getting in touch with me. Uh, through my email, I answer back and everything. And that lovely boxing fans talk TV, uh, cash out, you know, I do take all donations. Everything that's given goes right back into the channel and everything. So don't be, um, you know, a stranger to the cash app. For some reason, uh, YouTube is, I don't know why they're, they're playing with me with my subscribers and my uh, minutes or hours viewed. I don't know why. And I, I'm not, I've tried to reach out to them. They don't listen. So I just say, I'm just keep chugging along. And yes, I haven't been here in the last couple of days. But Steve got a lot on her plate. So I apologize. You know, right now I'm in the process of packing my house up. I'm about to move to another state. <laughs> and um, I'm getting ready for a big wedding. My daughter's getting married. So sometimes uh, getting here by 7.30 p.m. is hard to do. But I come on Monday through Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Monday through Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Unless I have something to do or it ain't much to do. I don't have a lot today. Uh, well, you know, I could talk about the Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence every day, but I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. I wanted, I wanted to uh, say some of whatever I had to say when it get closer and closer to the fight. So let's talk about the heavyweights today. Let's talk about Usyk and Fury. Now, I find it amazing that the boxing world has let Fury run amok in all his playing and everything, because that's what he's doing. He, he playing, I mean, he playing to win, but he playing, because twice in the past, Mauricio Suleiman tried to take his belt, and I don't know how hard it is for y'all to take his belt. You, they act like he got to actually hand it to them. That's his belt for life. You know, like he gets to keep that. All you got to do is say you don't recognize him as the heavyweight champion. He goes through and um, say he's retired. And then you can speculate however you feel why he does that. But I will tell you this. When you say you retired in between fights, one thing that isn't going down is vada testing. When you say it like that, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes in my mind, in my opinion, I look at I look at those factors, you know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, I guess you won't be vada tested. Not saying that he did anything like for that fight that uh was it last year when he fought um Dillian White. Him and Dillian uh, submitted their body testing. And I, and I shouted them out for that. But he Tyson Fury, he doesn't want to be led. He doesn't want to be told what to do. He doesn't want to be navigated he, in any kind of way outside of what he wants. And sometimes boxers can do that and sometimes they can't. So what he's doing is he playing footsie as if they falling for it. It's not that they falling for it. They just letting them get away with it. Usyk and Joshua has fought now, what, two years ago? It's about time that uh, Tyson and Usyk fight. We we got a, a, a potential, uh, well, I can say potential. It's going to be an undisputed um, champion between Fulton or anyway. I think they fight at the 122 um, belt, I mean, division. If I'm not mistaken, um, if I'm mistaken, y'all let me know. Then we got this big, big fight with Earl and, and Crawford, July 29th, that the welterweights undisputed. Josh Taylor and Terrence Crawford have been undisputed at 140. Devin Haney is undisputed at 135. 
we need to get to 26, 30. You know, uh, we do pay more attention to the, the higher weights. Uh, Jamel Charlo has been undisputed at 154. We need it at 160. Canelo is undisputed at 168. We need uh, Bivol and Berturbiev to meet up at 175. So we can get that on. We don't even know who the fuck is fighting in the cruiserweights. I mean, I don't. Let me rephrase that. I don't. So I ain't concerned. So this is an undisputed type error. And the heavyweights should be leading the bunch. You know, how I look at boxing divisions or any type of sporting events or anything, there's always a leader that you need to turn to. And and when it comes to boxing, the heavyweights, they should be the leaders. All the other divisions should be trying to emulate what the heavyweights are doing. Instead, it's the opposite way around. But definitely, everybody got the undisputed fever. And and it's such a big reward that anybody who's close to closing in to getting that, should that should be their main focus. They shouldn't be looking backwards or anything like that. But now, Usyk and Fury has been in talks. Having said all that, well, I guess it's happening after all. Because their fight is being pushed back to January by the Saudis. I didn't even know they had a fight coming up. That's number one. But the Saudis seem like they got their finger on the pulse of boxing. You know, it's, it's obviously the place to be for boxing. You know, boxers get more money. When they fight over there, they're very welcomed over there. And it's a good deal for them. I mean, Joshua and Usyk got $75 million apiece. If that ain't a life changer, I don't know what is. So you got Usyk and Fury who have a fight that nobody knew about, that I didn't know about. Um, and they moving it back to January and their reasonings are because of the pending fights between AJ and Wilder, not between the two, but the fights that they got coming up, AJ, Wilder, Fury, and Usyk, all of them got fights coming up this year. So the Saudis felt like, look, December is the time frame that they wanted to put on Fury and Usyk, but they, they want everybody to come in fresh, and not hurt and everything like this. So they was like, you know, just pushing the fight back in favor of both fighters or all fighters and let the fights that's coming up this year play out. They don't want to turn around and put the pressure on the fighters and have them come in possibly injured or not ready or just war-torn, you know. So they're pushing it back to January 2024 or within that first quarter of 2024. And that's their reasons. And then they said with them fighting in the summer, it's too much of a risk. That's how the Saudis feel. It's too much of a risk to have them fight in December when everybody's fighting in the summer and the fall. Is you know for the recovery of it all, they want to get them a chance to also recover. So Usyk and Daniel Dubois is fighting in September. Fury got a fight in October, but we don't know who his opponent is. If it's finalized, there was talk about an MMA person. This is what I mean by he playing too many games. Then they was talking about should we sanction it? It's like come on now. Fury does not want to play the game right. He want to do what he want to do when he want to do it. And if they if they feel like, you know, too much inactivity or he playing games or they want to take his belt, then take it. Give him the Emiratus belt. That way he got head of the line privilege 
when he want to come back when he's ready. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but but it seemed to be here lately that the Saudis are now filling the role of promoters. They signing up fighters and all that, you know, Wilder and Usyk to name a few. And like I said, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing to always go over there and fight in Saudi, but you know what? How can I be mad at how they making their bread? They gonna make more money in Saudi than fighting anywhere else. So I, I'm not mad at none of them. I know Usa probably was like, shit, run that back. That man got more money than he ever thought he could have. Wilder sitting pretty because you know Wilder is very financially responsible with his money and all that. Um, they waiting on Dillian White and AJ. What they gonna do? Now Dillian White apparently had a had a um, problem with the rematch clause in the contract of him and AJ. He had a problem with that. So the word on the street is that that rematch clause was taken out of the contract. So Dillian White shouldn't have no problem at this point signing the contract, you know, because it was removed. So everything hinges on what the Saudis want. That's a new one for us in the boxing world. It hinges on what they want. Are they acting responsible? I'm going to say yes, because they give a care about the fighters' well-being to say, you know, we're going to postpone it because all of them got fights, and we want them healthy, and we want them totally recovered, and we don't want to put that type of pressure on them. I mean, Fury's supposed to have a fight in October. He probably flake out of that one because he ain't going to get what he want. Nobody wants to see him. And and a, and a damn uh, MMA person. It's almost like Fury trying to live the life of Floyd Mayweather. But nigga, you got to decide whether you are retired or active. Floyd is retired, so he can do the exhibitions. He can fight those other people and all that. You're not retired. And I know he won't Mauricio to sanction any fight that he does. Why? Like he's taking us there. I, I think they should just take his damn belt. If he ain't going to act like a real boxer, take his belt, give him the emeritus, and give him head of the line privileges because he's holding up the rest of the heavyweights. Nobody, most people say nobody. I, I don't mind seeing, but a lot of people will say nobody wants to see Wild and Fury again. I don't care how many times I want to see him. Because, in my mind, Wilder beat his ass twice. That's it. That's all. It didn't go down like that technically on the books. But I know what I saw. So, I would like to see another fight. But, overall, the consistency is the boxing community don't want to see another fight with Fury and Wilder. So, Wilder got to move on. But if Fury is the one holding all the belts eventually then he gonna have to see the world the boxing world is gonna have to see wilder and fear because wilder wants those belts the aj wants to get back on top of the throne but he gotta he he feel like he gotta change up some stuff he's training with uh derrick james and he might see like he getting better he might even have a little bit more confidence but if he fights somebody and loses, he going to leave Derrick James. That's what AJ going to do. AJ got to understand it's not the trainer. It's, it's him. Derrick James can train anybody. He's a good trainer. But he's not going to bring nothing spectacular to the to the table. It's, it's AJ. Once AJ get in the ring with somebody that's better than him, he becomes timid. He does it all the time. He becomes timid. You know, he gets like he's getting nervous. 
And that's not a funny thing to laugh at. We all can be like that. I'm like that, I, I'm sure. You guys could be like that. You know, it's it's a common thing. But if you're in a boxing game, then you shouldn't be like that. You should be more elevated than the average Joe. So that's that's AJ problem. Getting a new trainer does not fix that. You know, but if he tries one of the moves that Derrick James and them taught him and it wind up being successful, he'll swear it, it was the training all along. It would be very interesting to see AJ fighting in the near future. Like whether he fight Dillian White or somebody else, I you know, I would be very interested to see how much he changed. Cause like I said, you get in there with somebody like the Usyk. And I don't care what nobody say. I've always thought he was scared to get in there with Deontay. Um, I don't know how he feel about getting in there with Fury. Anybody that could pose a threat, he gets timid. I ain't say scared, but he's like, like he hesitant. Like he, he, he not all the way sure. And, and when you in there with another warrior, your opponent can pick that shit up. Just like an animal can smell fear on you. You can be standing still, trying not to move, and that animal can smell fear. Don't pee on yourself. They smell that shit. Humans got that same ability. We can smell fear on somebody. We can sense, I'm going to say sense it. And, oh, because it'd be little, it's the little things you hesitate. You know, even like... When 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 Usyk and AJ was throwing their blows, going back and forth, whatever, I'm sure Usyk noticed the times where he probably was all out of position, off balance, and he probably thought to himself, "Man, AJ could have really did something right here," and he didn't. If you fighting to me, that would be an indication that you're a little hesitant. Like I said, I'm going to give him give AJ respect and not say scared because that's what I would normally say. But I would say you're a little hesitant. Derek James cannot fix that. I don't care how much he try. So it was never the trainer for AJ. It was him. It was all him. Usyk is the only one. Usyk and... um. Deontay, to me, got a fighter's mentality. They got a warrior spirit. Usyk ready to fight whomever. Deontay, Fury, whoever. Run that. Run that. That's how he feels. And when you're getting paid 75 million, it wouldn't shock me if every fight Usyk ever have going forward is all in Saudi. Now, you would say... Why Usyk ain't been busy lately? I think he's trying to give the top-notch elite heavyweights the opportunity to get, to get at him for the belts. He wants to go undisputed, and rightly so. I don't know why it's so hard, but I'm advocating that they take Tyson Fury's belt because he's dicking around. Take his belt. He don't know what the hell he want to do. And Mauricio Suleiman had a chance to do it twice and didn't follow through. There's no reason in this four belt era that, that the undisputed hasn't gone down yet. And the people who are to blame for this shit at this moment and at this moment in time was always AJ and now Fury. I know some of y'all like, why AJ? Because he hesitated. I don't think, and I don't care what the reasons are, that he ever wanted to fight uh, Deontay Wilder. I don't think he did. <clears throat> that fight was easy to make. Blame it on Eddie Hearn for marinating too long. Blame it on whatever. What I saw was one man desperate to have that fight and the other man wasn't. 
That's what I saw. Again, call it for whatever reasons that it couldn't get done. Maybe it was good reason. Maybe it was logical reasons. But what cannot be denied is that there was one man who wanted that fight and always asked for it. And you were sure that he wanted it. And one man who hardly said anything about that fight and wasn't pressed to have that fight. And that was Deontay asking and AJ not being pressed. And for years, we never got the undisputed. And, and the crazy thing is, the heavyweights could have led the way in this four bell era of getting undisputed. But they didn't. They didn't. You can thank AJ for that one. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care the reasons. I'm only going by what I saw in them. I can see whether this person wants it or not. We can all glean that. And if we honest with ourselves back then, it's nothing that AJ said or did that made you think he wanted to fight with Deontay. But you always saw Deontay wanting that fight. Now, AJ then lost the belt to Ruiz and got it back. It's almost like AJ don't know who he is for a time there. He's like he didn't know who he was unless he had the belts because that's how they defined him. And he did a good job. He got his, his belts back. But now, Usyk outclassed him. Usyk is talking like a, a, a champion that I, I mean, that, that's how I want a champion to act and talk. Usyk won it. Everything about Usyk tells me he ready for the smoke. Whether Fury is scared or not, everything he, he says does tell me you don't want it. AJ did rematch him, try to get his belts back, but Usyk is the better man, the better boxer. Usyk was already an undisputed champion, I think in the four belt era too, because he was a cruiserweight undisputed champion. Why wouldn't he want that? If Terrence Crawford wins, July 29th, he'll be the first man, the first to ever been undisputed in two different weight classes. That could have been Usy. Jerry said AJ has never wanted to fight Wilder. And guess what? Usyk has never wanted to fight Fury. I don't believe that. I don't believe that, Jerry, because I'm just going by his attitude and what he said. After his fights, he was like, he ready to fight Usyk. Bring him on. He said, well, where is Usyk? He just sitting on those points wins over AJ. Where is he at? You know, they got that permission, Jerry, to come out of uh, the Ukraine and, 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 and stop the war fighting just to come back to their careers. Um, I think Usyk only wanted to fight Fury. He wanted to go for Undisputed. I don't think he's scared. Um, I think fear is a joke. He's a disgrace. Some people are going to like him, but he's a joke. He's a liar. He's a manipulator. And he's a drug cheat. I mean, a disgrace. Straight up and down. He would, he would not be a champion that I adore. Uh, Jerry said Fury came to the States to fight the most dangerous puncher in, in the history of the world and H, in HW history. Uh, but he's scared of a undersized HW with a little power. Oh, you mean heavyweight? I don't believe that at all. Hey, why he ain't making a fight, Jerry? Easy question. If it's if it's what you say, Jerry, 
why he not making the fight? His his every move shows that you don't want the fight. If he doing criminal shit and he banned from the UN, United States, that's his ass. I hope he has somebody to handle his money affairs over here. But that's his ass. And about telling him to be linked up with who he linked up with. <clears throat> Plenty of liars in the heavyweight division. Wilder also one of them. It may be Jerry. All I know is Wilder never shows that he don't want no smoke. He never shows that he's scared. He taking on all comers. That's what you want in your in a boxer. Especially if it's your one of your favorites. That's what you want. I don't want. I can't gravitate towards, as a fan, a boxer who hesitate on everything, don't want to do this, don't want to do that, got an excuse for this. And dude, you pick this this career, not us. Some of these boxers sound crazy to me. That's like me saying, I don't want to go on a ship. Mm -mm. Especially in the winter, I don't want to go on a ship. They would look at me like I was crazy. You joined the Navy. The hell you mean you don't want to go on a ship? That's what the Navy do. If you ain't want to go on the ship, that was an easy fix. Don't join the Navy. If you don't want to go for undisputed and you don't want to get, you know, the fans what they want, not, you don't have to do it every time. Apparently, Fury does what he want to do. He has had his way, but he don't. When he go try to satisfy the fans, you don't want to do that. That's fine. It's not the end of the world, but go find another career. Because boxing ain't for you. You don't join this. You don't take on this type of career and then be sitting there him and the hawing about different fights and shit. That's not what you do. You know, you join boxing to fight, so fight. You know, uh, Jerry said, because it takes two to make a fight. Usyk offered the fight. And turned it down because he did not like the terms. Jerry, the only the person, Jerry, I don't care how you slice it. Usyk comes off like he wants the smoke. That he wants to complete this mission and become undisputed. I cannot say that about Tyson Fury. And when I compare the two, it's one of them that look like they got too many excuses. General Big Fish is in the building. What's poppin', King? Said Boss T. What's good? But I find it, Jerry, what do you think about the Saudis running boxing? Because I'm going to tell you, if they do well with this and everything seems to streamline really well, don't you think that it's a lot of boxers that's going to prefer to go fight over there? Because the money is better. Let's not get it twisted. The money is better. I mean, I, I'm still tripping on AJ's and Usyk uh, purse when they when they met up seventy five million a piece. A piece. Shit. I'll get in the ring with one of the motherfuckers and last. Enough seconds to get paid. <laughs> I don't care if it's a dude or not. You you gonna pay me like that? I'll be a huckleberry. Usa got enough money he can say fuck this box and get throw all them belts to the wind. Tyson Fury 
want to fight wrestlers. He want to go on his uh his uh victory lap for for two and three years. He don't want to fight. He want to do what he want to do. And if they were gonna fight, this I've been waiting to see if anybody was going to answer his call, because y'all remember a while back, Tyson Fury said the only way he'll fight is if they pay him $500 million. I don't think Floyd got a purse like that. If Floyd made it, it's because of his ownership behind the scenes of a lot of stuff. Floyd merchandise be sold the fuck out. That's number one. Anytime you spending over $50 for a poster of him and Manny Pacquiao. That's just a poster. That poster costs probably a couple of dollars to make. Talk about 100% turnaround. Probably more like 500% turnaround. I bought the poster. It was expensive for a poster. You know, um, I believe I said on here it was twenty dollars. I went back and looked because I kept my receipts. I kept my MGM tickets that I had to stay in the MGM. I kept all my my ticket receipts and everything, just to mark time. You know, I'm gonna put it in the scrapbook. I went to the Pacquiao Floyd fight, and I saw the receipt, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, the poster was over fifty dollars." I don't know why I thought it was twenty. I bought socks. I bought a hat. The hats were 70. The t-shirts were over 70. And I was like, God damn. Hey, General Big Fish, are you going to go get your, your undisputed t-shirt? Your undisputed Earl Spence t-shirt? <laughs> Jerry, you can get it too. Y'all see the ticker at the bottom? AskMeT51.com. Go get your undisputed. Stake your claim. I got mine in the mail the other day. Jerry Tass said, it's good. Problem is, is when they got don't stage the fight. Guys like Usyk will want to get paid like he did against AJ. Don't work like that. What you mean it don't work like that, Jerry? If they go to, to Saudi Arabia... And the Saudis pay them like that. I mean, they won't go get no seventy-five million a piece fighting in the U.S. or or the U.K. But in Saudi, that's another story. That's how the Saudis like to pay them. So I, I'm not understanding what you mean by like what, it don't work like that. You know. So let me know. Damn, I'm at that. Nah, I guess I could do that. Hey, big fish, you gonna get you gonna get your uh, t-shirt? I done made a mess over here. Damn. <laughs> Spilt my drink. Ah, oh, shit. Damn. I guess I live. Jerry, you gonna go get a t-shirt? He said, right, but if, if the Saudi don't stage the fight, the money is not the same. I get that, Jerry. They nowhere else is they gonna get that kind of money. I get I get that. If that's what you were saying, I didn't I wasn't quite what you mean, knowing what you mean, like you saying don't work like that. Because apparently it worked like that. They get the money that they want. You know, um that's why a lot of them want to fight over there now. And I'm telling you, the more they do that, they hold fights over there in Saudi, and it gets better and better and better. <laughs> uh, I can see Saudi being the mecca for boxing. Because, I mean, who can argue with the damn money that they make? I, I can't argue. 
I could never tell a fighter, don't go over there, you know. Hey, they paying big bucks. In the heavyweights, they showing their appreciation. Because I don't think Usyk have ever, ever in his career came anywhere close to making $75 million. I don't think that has ever happened in his life. But now that it happens, it's like one of the things that once you make something, you can't go backwards. You know what I'm saying? And if you go backwards, it's got to be a reasonable uh, reason why. You know what I'm saying? So, like, nobody's going to make that kind of money in uh, in the States. The closest person who, who has made that type of money for a one fight will probably be Canelo. But I don't even think that was ever his purse. Bit. I think the combination of his purse with his back end money elevated him to that amount. But I'm just saying, you know, they they that was just the purse bid. Not to mention the back end and shit. You know what I'm saying? So Jerry said, maybe not, but I will be buying the fight. And not streaming it. Um, eighty-five bucks. You got Spence close. <laughs> you say I got Spence close in a classic. I hear you, Jerry. You and Big Fish. Of course not. <laughs> and that payday has went to his head. Oh, Jerry, you don't know that. Hold on, let me see if I can get a picture of the shirt. Y'all need to go. Y'all need to go on and get. Mm. I thought I had a Spence t-shirt. Ah, oh, that's messed up, Miss T. Miss T coming off like she biased. I thought I had a, a Spence t-shirt. But that's the, uh, if y'all look at y'all screen, <clears throat> that's the Bud t-shirt. And Spence is just like that, but he got his name, the Big Fish, in the inside and, and his name on the edge of the circle, like at the bottom, just like that. Um and it said undisputed 2023. So y'all, y'all go get y'all shirts. It come in all colors. I got this color right there that you see on the screen. Destiny got this one that you see on the screen right now. But go in there and get that. <laughs> Our minds is on the way. <laughs> Ladies, claim your roles and other gems while they last. This is for the ladies, right? So put that back up. Jared, get your wife this. Big fish. Get your girl this. Yeah, I, I heard rave reviews about it. I got mines on the way. <laughs> Again, AskMeT51.com. AskMeT51.com. Go in there and get y'all stuff. Uh, they got Christmas in there, Christmas decorations, Christmas stuff. They got plenty of gadgets um, and more to come. So go on there. Go in there and shop till you drop. Uh, in other news... I don't know if y'all caught the interview that Wilder gave with some dude. I don't know the guy's name. But uh, Wilder blasts Andy Ruiz for not accepting an offer. Like, basically saying that he's being difficult. And uh, that's not good for Andy, of course. Um, Wilder says that Ruiz cannot afford to miss... An opportunity like this, you know, uh, why he's saying it, he said they claiming, he claiming his career could be over that fast, like the blink of an eye, like he's forgettable or whatever. That's how Wilder is, is talking about Andy Ruiz. I mean, he goes in on him, but here in, in Wilder's reasoning, he, he points out another case of an overzealous father dipping into his son's affairs and not really making the right decision in the long run for his son. 
or you know he, he's throwing a monkey wrench in his shit you know uh like we we all know of those fathers who live vicariously through their children and i guess andy ruiz father is doing the same first of all this is my question didn't andy ruiz become a millionaire after he fought aj And I ain't talking about no little millionaire. I thought he had close, you know, like 10 figures or more that he had totally, that he earned totally. Because I know he got a couple of million, three or something like that with the first fight. And then the rematch, I think he, they paid him like 10 plus or whatever. And why do we talk about him like the dude is on the verge of being broke? Or being broke is a very big possibility for Andy Ruiz, if he, and and to stave that off, he need to get his father out of his business. I don't know what y'all think. I didn't know that Andy Ruiz blew through his money. Uh, Jerry said, "Of course not," and that payday has went. <laughs> yeah, I think I read that. Um, and while the words he needs to stop listening to his dad. He's going to wreck his career, his chances to get the fight, asking for 50-50. So apparently Andy Ruiz and them won a 50-50 fight with Wilder. And Wilder's saying you need to stop asking for that because that is not going to happen. Wilder points out he was just a champion for a half a second. He said a blink of an eye, I put a half a second. Um. What wind up happening, we all know. We all heard about him eating pizza right before the fight. We all know that he was a fat slob of himself when he did the rematch. And it was probably due to stamina. You know, we know that he he's one of them guys who can carry weight. I guess he's big and he could be in shape, but looking big and everything. But he, he was 283 when he fought AJ in the second fight and lost the belts over food over laziness you know what i'm saying because he stuck to um if this is what i always say if you do something a long time and you stick with it and you do your due diligence god's gonna bless you he's gonna reward you because you stuck with it you know what i'm saying andy ruiz has been fighting since he was a kid the boy can box big stomach and now his stomach is a disproportionate disproportion to his body his torso area um don't know why it's so much bigger than everything else and um but he used to be signed with top rank top rank let him go uh he probably didn't like we said boxing is not for everybody it's not you don't play boxing he probably uh wasn't that much into boxing and everything and people can see that you know sometimes he's serious sometimes he's not which is sad because he is really talented i mean if he was hardcore focused like if he had the focus of crawford or spence ain't no telling where andy ruiz would be because he's one of the people that are shock you that you don't expect but very capable of of handling himself against any of the top guys, you know. But Wilder is like, don't price yourself out. Let's let's go. Let's get this fight. Uh I would like to know what he was gonna get, you know what I'm saying? Maybe 70, 30 or whatever, which would have been still okay. I mean, cause they got to pay Wilder. They got to. Yes, Wilder had that fight in October. I, was it last year? when he was uh, while in or something, but his numbers were not that good. But they're not going to throw Wilder out just over that one fight. You know, they're not going to say, oh, your numbers suck. They 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 were in the tank. So we, we only going to pay you a third of what we used to. They're not going to do that to Wilder because they know Wilder is a big draw. And Wilder's talking a lot of shit. Let me read y'all some of the shit that he was saying. Y'all know my favorite fight. He one of my favorite fighters. But uh, 
He, I like how I, he going for Spence, and I'm cool with that. But if he got on there and start talking shit about Crawford, I don't know. I don't know why he might have to be replaced. Don't talk about my boy. But anyway, uh, he said, guess what? When that money runs out, there ain't nowhere else to be. Andy is going to be 33 years old, broke, and can't support his children because his daddy made decisions for him. He should have made decisions for himself. Ain't that what I be hollering about, everybody? Isn't that what I charge Earl Spence up with? Like, how you give carte blunt uh, authority to somebody else over your career, and you're a grown man? That just don't make sense to me. So whatever I said about Earl in that case, go for Andy, too, if that's what he's doing. He said, the thing about it, I hate when people try to make decisions for fighters when they are when they are the product. They are the fighters. They're the ones risking their lives. His daddy isn't risking his life in there, but he wants to grab the money. How much of a percentage is he getting out of his son? Let's ask. Let's ask that because you want to talk about money? How much cut do you get from your son? Stop allowing your son to miss out on things because if he misses out on this one, that could be the end of his career. Then it's going to be on you and don't lecture him on how much money he could have had saved when you took it all from him. Uh, this was a weird article. I mean, um, Deontay was saying a lot because apparently Andy Ruiz was in negotiation with Tyson Fury, but he priced himself out. According to Wilder, and Wilder was like, did you learn anything from that experience? So, I mean, um, when Andy Ruiz was sleeping on the couch of his mama house, where was his daddy? You know what I'm saying? That's the question I would be asking. You know what I'm saying? Um, Wilder also said his daddy got some kind of Fugazi-ass construction company, and they, they be bleeding um, fucking Andy dry. I was like, well, God damn. You know what I'm saying? Martin King Boxing is in the building. What's Poppy King? <clears throat> Jerry said, why would Ruiz take advice from Wilder over his own father? 60-40 with Wilder possibly getting knocked out. I don't know why you said, just because Tyson Fury knocked Wilder out, I don't see how you draw the line and the conclusion that these other heavyweights can do it probably can't do it. And I, I don't know if you meant 60, 40, meaning Wilder gets 60 and they get 40. I don't I don't even mind that, Jerry. I don't mind that, but 50 50, Wilder has a point. Between them two, Wilder would be the A side. Even though Andy had three belts, as Wilder said, a blink of an eye, I'ma say a half a second. Wilder is still the A side. Wilder brings the, the crowds in. You know, he put asses in the seat. Ain't that how y'all talk about Earl? Wilder does that more than Andy Ruiz do. But why would anybody listen to anybody in the boxing community give them advice? Why would Crawford listen to anything I say? Why would Spence fans? Think that Earl gonna listen to what they say, but people still say it. And once it's said, it's out there in the atmosphere. And if you listen to all these fighters, Crawford, Earl alike, and everybody, you can hear some of the echoes of what people in the YouTube community has said. You know, Earl repeats certain things that he I know he got from the YouTube channels, and so is Crawford, and so is other fighters. Because they know we out here listening. They know we out here looking. They know. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We are the fans. We are the ultimate fans. Monica King says, step into the moonlight. Get to body. Uh, Miss T loves some Wilder. <laughs> look, look. Wilder don't like Crawford. Well, I ain't say don't like. He, he got Spence. 
I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> but it's all good. It's just a fight. Jerry said, because Wilder has been inactive, and I believe he is washed up. Well, Jerry, that's one way to look at it. I don't believe Wilder's washed up. He said, yeah, I don't see a 50-50, but Wilder is no big draw. He is compared to Andy. Y'all, we got to keep things in perspective. Okay? Tank is the only one in this era who shocked all of us and broke a million. You know, I don't I don't even know if Canelo's fight one of his fights with Triple G did 1.4. Tanks did. That was proven in his last pay-per-view. He only drew drew against Fury. He did well without Fury. That's why their fights were massive and big in the first place. You gotta take your bias out of it, Jerry. Jerry Ta- Jerry said, uh uh, Omada King said, Jerry Tasker, what you think about the Spence calling Crawford a slave? Uh-oh. <laughs> he said, asking for an aerosexual, don't get nervous. Jerry Tasker, honest answer, bro. Yeah, go ahead and answer that, Jerry. Spence could have, like I said, <laughs> I've always said, Spence could have said a lot of things I'm not, and to be honest, Monica King, I'm not even that mad about it because you get used to it. I guess what's not making me that mad about it or upset is the fact that the fight is July 29th. And Crawford going to handle all they going to take care of that light work. But uh, Smith don't be knowing what to say out of his mouth, do it. Of all the things to get a saying, that motherfucker actually said Kuta Kinte. <laughs> Jerry said Tank did those numbers with Ryan. His other pay- four pay-per-views did not sell more than two hundred thousand. Keep keep it in perspective. I, I I get that. My point is, no matter how you slice it, Jerry, that uh, in this era, the one who's broke a million like that, that's Tank. We hope that most of these fighters break a million. Andy Ruiz has never done that. So what you going by? But you can look at Deontay and say, yeah, you did that regardless of who you was fighting. You can say he did that. Tank can go and fight somebody we don't want him, him to fight. And guess what? He, you have to give it up to him because he broke a million. That's just how, how it works, Jerry. Even Ryan can go and tout it. Hey, well, okay, what you say? I broke a million when I was fighting. Ryan can use that to his clout. Because it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Andy Ruiz. Nobody knew Andy at all. Hardly. I'm going to say hardly. People in boxing knew him. But hardly anybody knew him when he fought AJ. It was a straight shock to everybody how that whole thing played out. And I don't care what nobody say, AJ was cherry picking, and it was a cherry pick gone wrong. That's what it was. Mona said, I feel like it puts a dark cloud over two Americans. It makes you it makes us look ignorant. He said, Martin, yeah, not crazy about that. Uh he said, Spence going to sleep now. <laughs> Well, that's Tank and Ryan. What I'm going to, um, what I'm going by, is the opponent matters. The um, the divide is sickening. Some of these channels should have been banned. Listen, no, I don't go by that, Jerry. And you, you, you are more than welcome to to go by that. I'm not fussing at you, Jerry. Y'all hit the like and share and subscribe. Why I don't go by that? That that uh barometer, Jerry, is because it didn't matter who Floyd for. It didn't matter who his opponent was. Floyd is money in the bank. And he is not going to be the only one in history to be like that. There will be other fighters that come behind him. Sometimes it's just when you hit that plateau. 
and you can go up. I'm going to give you another example. Canelo, as you always say, Jerry, that's money in the bank. It don't matter that Canelo took a loss with Bivol. There were people still trying to put him on the top in the top five of the pound for pound, taking a loss like he did. Canelo will always make money. <clears throat> look at what look at the rumors about. I don't know if they all the way rumors. I believe they true that he signed a three fight deal with PBC, and look how much they want to pay him. Before Floyd, he was not ever getting that shit. All he had to do is fight Floyd. Those were his lemons. He took that lemon and he made lemonade. What the help of the media? Because he has the um he has the he's appeasing to the eye for for the media as far as the media is concerned. A Mexican fighter that it resembles like a white guy and and can fight his ass off. That's appeasing. They could sell that. I'm not saying it in no kind of racist way, but they could sell that. And kudos to Canelo for being a sellable person. You know, he, he's blessed that he, he, he has a face or physique or whatever where, where the media feel like they could sell him. And he backs his shit up by winning these fights. But he do things that we don't like. He fight people that we don't want him to fight. He seem like he cherry picking. And now the European fighters, that's exactly what they calling his ass, a cherry picker. You know, but coming off a loss, and I know he I know he just won a, he won some. I, I think he fought. But e- either way, the only fight that people remember is Bivol. But Canelo will always make money. They will always pay him. Because to them, once he did the Triple G shit, he always going to make money. And you can arguably say that they both bought the fans out. They both bought considerable amount of people to buy pay-per-view. But once Canelo did it, it was to them it's for life. He has a lot of Mexican um, um, famous boxers or people in the game that don't like him, that think he's fugazi. Mom Juan Manuel, what is his name? Juan Manuel Marquez doesn't think much of Canelo the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Don't think much of a Canelo. And these are permanent staples in Mexico, period, as boxers. He don't even got their respect all the way. They don't look at him like he's a great Mexican fighter, (laughs) which he would go down history as. That's why he was trying to he 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 saw the writing on the wall. He was looking at what Clarissa did, and he wanted to be the first man to do whatever. Well, now we got Bud and Earl Spence able to make history by doing what Clarissa Shell has already done. You know, and, I, and I'm sure it's not lost on her that the men is like, damn, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can say what you want. I, I've said it too. She doesn't, it's not that big of a pool for her with competition. Maybe it'll look different if she had that. If you had so many women vying for that belts, but don't matter. It's enough of them. She did it three times. What man has done it more than once in any division? Not even the great Floyd Mayweather. Jerry said Floyd was hated by most. That made his numbers. Go look at the numbers he did against Berto late in his career and then tell me the opponent does not matter. It was his last fight, Jerry. Nobody was given a care. 
Floyd was on his way out the door. Floyd couldn't be more clear that he wasn't fighting nobody. See, you make an argument out of something that I never said. Opponents do matter, but not how you're saying it matters is what I have pause with. Not to the, I'm going to say this, not to the degree it matters, you know, that I agree with. Yeah, Ryan brought in some crowd. Tank brought in some crowd together. They they made magic. Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, when when they was trying to not pay them a person, and you was on here talking about it's justified and they don't make money where they can make money, and everybody in their mama know that this fight was gonna be big as shit. I got people in my family hollering at me about this fight. And I know y'all do too. This fight was going to make money. And everybody knew it. But everybody want to tiptoe and act like, you know, oh, we can't because it's going to be thievery and all that. You know what? They stole fights during Tank Fight too. Tank and Ryan fight, they stole them fights too. They steal Canelo fights too. But we got to pay them motherfuckers. But we can't pay Terrence. And then you was one of the people saying that that was justifiable and it matters who their dance partner is. It does. I, I get that part. It makes it, it could take it from being a good moneymaker to a, a spectacular moneymaker. But in the end of the day, each one of them can claim something to that because they their name was on the marquee. The people came to see them too. They ain't just come to see Tank. They ain't just come to see Ryan. They came to see both of them as together, you know. Uh, Canelo, most memorable fight for me was Caleb Smith and Triple G1. Mm -hmm, those were good ones. If Canelo is a cherry picker, what is Andre and Jamal Charlo? Andre been trying to fight uh, Canelo. Canelo ran out the, out the the division not to fight um, Andre. Jamal Charlo, granted, he going through some stuff, but I, I believe in fair is fair. He didn't held on to that belt way too long. The WBC would be well within their rights to take his belt. I, it's not that I want that to happen, Jerry, but I'm just saying it's only fair. They stripped Pacquiao, didn't it? But in activity, didn't they? They've stripped other people. But inactivity, don't they? What's different about Jamal Chano? That's all I'm saying. What would be different about him? I'm always about the fairness. I'm not saying it's against Jamal. Jamal is um is a good fighter. But he, I mean he. he he, life happened. Life happened. Happens to all of us. So I ain't laughing at him or making light of his shit. Life happens. But fair is fair. You know what I'm saying? We got to be fair. Uh, his life has nothing to do with any other boxer's life, and he holding on to a belt that could be offered up to somebody else. He don't want to fight, and he ain't fighting. No offense, Charlo. Get yourself together and come back. Do what Keith Thurman did. We should all take a, a page out of his book, drop the belt, and ask the WBC for Emeritus belt. That way you first in line. You, you're, not, you're not taking the L. You're getting time to get yourself together. And when you're ready to come back, you get head of line privileges. Take the time that you need. He said, oh, I forgot about Billy Joe Saunders. Floyd has sons of American, Af Af American, African, or African-American fighters that did not like or think much of him. Jealousy is strong. True that? You know why, Jerry Tasker. Because Floyd didn't pass the baton the right way, should have uh, fought, the, fought Thurman. 
if he want if he won, so be it. Yeah, Thurman was begging for that fight. And that's why that's Earl's claim to fame. Because Earl comes up and um and and show everybody, you know, he, he was the, the monkey wrench that the Floyd threw in front of Thurman. He said, Floyd ain't no nah, Floyd ain't bitch made motherfucker. And if Canelo does the same to Benavides, he's a bitch too. Same energy. Damn. I don't know if I agree with you on that, Martin King. Floyd, my favorite fighter. But it's all good. I mean, I can't I can't shield. I, I can't say nothing to shield some of the stuff that they say about Floyd, but Floyd one of my favorite fighters. He said, I'm saying opponents matter when selling, but not an end all the be all, Jerry. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. When Floyd fought, it did not matter who he fought. We was coming to see that shit. We were buying that fucking pay-per-view. Whether you hated him, whether you liked him, whether you wasn't sure, a lot of people bought that fight, and they ain't even know boxing like that. Floyd would bring, let them dig in their pockets. You know who else got that kind of uh, shit with them? Uh, Javante Davis. It's so many people today, they can't even pronounce his name, know his name, and be like, when he fighting again? <laughs> I play this show on my Facebook. So I have people watching it, but the people from Facebook, when they ask me, they were like, when is he fighting again? That's, you know, that little light-skinned dude from B-more. They read, they read to spend their coins on somebody on a sport that they don't even follow that much, but they like watching him. That's the kind of flavor that Floyd had. So it wouldn't have mattered who was his opponent? Floyd bought a billion dollars to Vegas every time he fought. And you really could just lay it at his feet. You could. Now, you know, you're going to get some interest and all that, depending on the uh, the opponent. Like, uh, the people that hate Floyd, they like to see him get an opponent where you can, you know, with a straight face say in your head, I don't know. Maybe maybe Floyd met, met his match this time. That's what they wanted. Okay, so that's that's what I'm saying. Somebody else can step into Floyd's shoes when it comes to garnering interest and in just him. And that person that I see is on his way to that is Javante Davis for right now. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know Crawford, my favorite fighter, and I didn't say that about him. He said, you want pay-per-view fans, want legendary status with leaving sport with no uh, faculties, not this cherry-picking crap. Uh, Jamal Charlo, a soft lion. <laughs> now his lion man is nappy. <laughs> And Trey B. Selby says nothing. <laughs> Jerry said, here's the bottom line. Tank never sold more than 200,000 pay-per-views till he fought Ryan. A beltless contender, Santa Cruz, was a multi-weight champion. Numbers not even close. Uh, Jerry, I don't know what point you're trying to make. It don't. I get it. I get it that you say they wasn't all that before they was all that. Now they all that. Ryan can um can ask for more and demand more and possibly be an A side for his next fights. Why? Because he was a part of it. He was a part of it. Tank can ask more than Devin Haney. And Devin Haney is the motherfucking uh undisputed champion in that division. But you can arguably say who is the A-side with either one, since everybody like to go by the money. Yeah, that has uh, worked out well for Thurman. It did. It did. He's still number one. It sure did work out well. He didn't get the uh, the uh, Spence fight, 
But we don't want nobody to get the Spence fight but Crawford. And Keith Thurman know that shit. But he's in line. Let's say they didn't have a rematch clause. And either one of them, I don't care which one, won the fight. Thurman can challenge for the um, WBC. Or Bruce Ennis can challenge for the IBF. Or if, if Spence won, then Standing Onis can say, remember your contract? What you mean it didn't work? Thurman ain't at the bottom of the heap. He said Charlo or Diva. He loved the limelight, the drinks, the entourage. That's his thing. Which one? is The is the young one seemed like he was more like that, but he seemed like he getting better. The young one, you can tell them millions to soften him. Them million, because when he won Undisputed, he got a check for $10 million. He walked out of there with $10 million. He showed it on the plane ride home. And I'm sure he's still getting paid for that fight. He probably got a lot of back-end money, too. He said, Berto fight says differently. Jerry, I swear your perspective is so... I don't know what to say. Berto fight says different. Okay, so what Conor McGregor fight say? Uh, that's what Jerry, you be tripping. Floyd only made thirty-two million versus Berto. He is straight lame. <laughs> Are you talking about Floyd or Berto? Good assessment, but I think most of them sales was because of Ryan. The black folks was there for um, and Ryan TikTok uh, boys and girls. Tank Tank got a lot of sales too. Okay. One, PBC promoted that fight. PBC promoted that fight. Anybody say they didn't, it's not telling the truth. I couldn't go 30 minutes watching regular TV without seeing a promo for that fight. Terrence and, and Earl have been out there promoting to their credit, more than they used to. M way more than they used to. And you can tell they're not polished at it. Uh, but over time, if they keep you know, doing it, they'll get better. But I don't see what Showtime is doing extra promoting. They promoted the hell out of Ryan and Tank. I don't know if Golden Boy chipped in and did some promoting. I don't know who, who was the promoter of all these promos and shit that was playing. Like I said, all day, every day. Family members don't even watch boxing. They watch that. They bought that. I just put it on my Facebook. I got 300 people following me on my Facebook. Um, I put it on my Facebook. And I be damn a, a good 50 of them bought that fight. And all I said was, don't forget the Tank and Ryan fight. And, of course, I had a picture. Oh, that light-skinned dude. Oh, yeah. Or some people like, Ryan, oh, I think he got it. I seen him on hot boxing with, uh, with Mike Tyson. Some people got that it factory. Some people don't. But, you know, again, I always tell you, Jared, the people do what the hell they want to do. Whether they go because to give Canelo what PBC about to give him now is a waste of money. It is a loss. It's a waste of money. He didn't do all that great at the Bivol fight. He ain't been selling out like that on his pay per views neither. His his pay per views been in the tank. And I'm talking about Canelo. But yet, PBC about to pay this motherfucker $100 million. So when I tell you, Jerry, because you be like, they just not going to lose money, T. Nobody does that. I don't get how you don't understand it. This is why I don't understand it. There's nothing that Canelo has done lately to justify paying this dude $100 million 
point blank period. That's it. That's all. And you cannot even justify it. Big Fish said PBC back on top, Misty. Little too late, uh, Big Fish. Little too late. PBC is, has been doing well this year, but they should have did that last year. It's not this year, P, uh, General Big Fish, that Paramount was making their decision off of. And Paramount didn't say, well, we're going to see how you do in 2023. Paramount made their decision last year based on the numbers that they seen at that time and before that time. So PBC, it's a shot in the dark. I don't blame them. For trying to, you know, their last rock, because you never know. Nothing is an absolute, but uh, I think it's a little too late. I'm going to tell you, I'm and this is how I'm going to prove it to you. I don't know if this is happening to y'all. I have Showtime on my cable. I got Xfinity, right? And there's a button on the remote. You can say Showtime, and it, it'll turn to Showtime, right? Every time I do that, it takes me to an app. And they asked me, do I want to do a trial membership for seven days or whatever? And all, and I'm like, I have Showtime. The hell is this? So I can't even get to Showtime. Me saying Showtime in the remote does not register. I have to say USA because my USA channel is close to my Showtime, Showtime channel. So I say USA. The TV turns to USA. And then I hit the guide button and I go down till I see Showtime. Then I click it and then voila, Showtime is on. But to turn to it or ask, you know, turn to Showtime, it won't do it. It'll take me to an app. Is anybody else having this kind of problem? My mom said she having the same problem. Anybody else? And we in two different states. So she having a problem up there and I'm having it down here. He said, PBC is here to stay, Miss T. I don't know wh why you get that conclusion. What, what has happened other than they've been having a great year this year that makes you draw that conclusion? When you have seen, and you ain't, don't, hey, don't lie, Big Fish, I've shown it on my show, and I know you've seen that, P that Paramount has said what they said about that. Now, what Extra information, because I know you always say, when I get new information, I can form another opinion. What has changed that makes you form another opinion? And if what has changed for you is that PBC putting on good shows this year, that is not enough to draw a conclusion like what you're saying. That is not enough. That's not how business works. So what has changed? Paramount made their decision. And they took their time with it, too. You talking more than a year of them, let me see what the next quarter bring. Let me see what the next quarter bring. And then finally they said, are we done? Uh, What's his name? So you say they're here to stay. So what, what happens to Steven Espinosa's job at CBS that he got? What happens with that? Because he got a job to go work with the sport parts of CBS. Do that job? Is that job gone now? I'm just I'm trying to tell you, Big Fish. This year should change your mind. I've never thought they'd be put out of business. Okay, well, I guess you, you never thought that they, it can't change my mind, you know. I'm okay, let me put it like this. My first duty station in the Navy, I was at Hell Surprise 16. Shout out to anybody watching this that's from Hell that was stationed at Hell Surprise 16 next to the Mac Terminal, next to the Blue Ridge, uh, not the Blue Ridge, uh, the Blue Angels. Yeah, I, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of them, but they are flying um, group with the Navy. They do fantastic flights and stuff. They put on flight shows and shit. But anyway, they they the most like top of the line pilots ever. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, 
my squadron was like a search and rescue squadron, right? I was there for two uh, COs. So one transferred and the XO became the CO. And he didn't leave because he had applied to become an astronaut. And he got the job. But as everything's going, Pensacola, Florida needed a search and rescue place. They still do today need one. But um, when I got there, they had the USS Lexington, which is a carrier. And uh, that, that carrier was a training carrier. It didn't go out for missions. It mainly was a training carrier for the pilots to learn how to land and take off on a carrier that's moving. And the, and it was docked in the Gulf of Mexico because, you know, Pensacola is right there by the Gulf of Mexico, right? So when I got to Pensacola right after boot camp, the Lexington had decommissioned. So all the people who was in Pensacola for that, they left. So now I'm at this helicopter support squadron. One, and both of the helicopters can go on the land. Matter of fact, most of those helicopters were older than me. They were like 25 and 30 years old. Look look brand new because of the way you got to keep it up. Now, the helicopter with the wheels, the, the Sea King, that always deployed with the carriers. That's I don't know. Maybe they flew all the way to Norfolk and caught a carrier out of there. But the, the helicopters that I worked on, that I was a plane captain with, um, they they were the UH-1N turbo joints. The kind, if you if you had watched Chuck Norris missing the action, the helicopter that was in that, but it was one engine. I had a turbo engine, so I had two right beside each other. Anywho, that squadron is needed. How many times people go out, swim, and almost drown? Boat accidents, uh, the, what you call those jet skis things, and all kinds of water accidents. That squadron was needed. They search and they rescue all the time. But guess what? It came a time when they had a decom. And, you know, when you up there in Washington, D.C., and the Congress people in the Senate is willing and dealing what base they gonna close down, what this they gonna close down. You know, it's if they you know, they playing their games up there and it's affecting real lives wherever. Well they decided for whatever reason that that squadron was gonna close down. We call it decommon. It didn't mean they closed down on the people. Shit, you should be so lucky to be in a squadron or be a part of a command that decon. Because that means you gonna get whatever you want. You gonna get orders wherever you want. They they gonna just roll out the red carpet for you because they're the ones shutting down. It don't matter how many, or it didn't matter how many people we saved the next year. And we did remarkable things. We did, because right now, there's a statue, a wall south, the second wall south outside of D.C. It's in Pensacola, Florida, and there's a helicopter on top, and it was a real helicopter. Guess who was one of the few people on that work detail that put that helicopter out there? Me. And my name was Airman Teasley. And you you see A N T S, you know, and my name is on that helicopter. I was one of the few. It was four of us, and we worked around the clock and got that shit ready for the wall south. Guess what? None of that mattered. None of it mattered. When they decided to shut that bitch down, it didn't matter what we did after. And I and I'm here to tell you, like I said. We did remarkable things. We saved lives. We saved, uh, uh, you know, equipment like people's boats. You know what I'm saying? We did a lot of great things after they decided 
to decom us. And they still decommed us because the decision was made. So that's why I'm saying, I know that's a, probably be like, damn T, you know, that story is applicable to me because that's how I see it with Paramount. Paramount did not make their decision, Big Fish, on what PBC was doing this year. This year had nothing to do with Paramount's decision. Paramount made their decision based on what happened last year and the year before that. They PBC had time. If they was going to change their minds, they should have been doing that work last year. You know, P- Paramount has made moves. Steven Espinoza got a job at CBS. You know, we'll see. Nothing is absolute. And I get it that you said you be- you never believed they was going nowhere anyway. But I, everything I see shows me. Like I said, I can hit the button on my cable remote and call off any channel and my cable remote would turn to it except Showtime. Like it don't even exist. I can only get to it if I use the guide and and go down. I can't even say, because in my remote, I can say the number, the channel number, or the channel name. It don't recognize it. So what that tell me, why would my cable be acting like that? Why would my mom's cable way up in Virginia be acting like that? Yes, (laughs) y'all. Somebody on my Facebook. Yes, uh, I did do the artwork, if you will, (laughs) if you want to say it like that. I was a part of building the second wall south in in the south. You know, the Vietnam wall south, we built one in the south. That was me and three other people. We did the work, honestly. Um... (laughs) He said, this year should change your mind. Now, uh, he said, let me clarify. When I say PBC, I'm talking specifically about Al Heyman. <laughs> Lady T, hello, queen. What's up, Mr. Golden? He said, Big Fish, what's up? MKB, what's up? Yeah, what's up, y'all? I was busy this week. I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all know that I'm moving. And I'm, I'm you know, be saying this all the time. I'm moving, I'm packing out my house, I'm getting ready for a big wedding next year. So sometimes I can't make it to 7.30. You know, but I always tell y'all, if it ain't nothing to talk about, I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't fake the funk neither. But um, yeah, I couldn't get here this week. It was so much for me to do. I wanted to be here. I apologize, but I couldn't. But Big Fish, that's why I say that. I, I'm not making it up, Big Fish. I'm not making up what Paramount said. I I only read it just like y'all read it. You know, Paramount said they absolving Showtime. Not Miss T. I didn't call nobody and ask them to do it or anything. That's what Paramount said. And Big Fish, you know they said that. And again, that decision was made last year. Not this year. So Paramount don't give a care. Like, that's like, you can never, if if we don't do it like that, nobody can ever make decisions. Because after all, tomorrow is another day, right? In my Vivian Lee voice. <coughs> now, Big Fish and Maceo and um, Martin King, and Jerry, and whoever else, the regulars that come on. First of all, let me holler at the ladies. Ladies, go over to AskMeT51.com and claim your rose. Your rose is waiting for you. <laughs> your rose is waiting for you. I'm just showing you a picture. Go on over there and get your rose while supplies last. Um, <clears throat> Big Fish and all y'all. 
Uh, y'all ain't gonna buy y'all t-shirts. What we wait now? <laughs> what we wait now? <laughs> I know mine's is on this way. <laughs> My rose is on this way. Matter of fact, when I get off here, I'm going to look at the ETA, the estimated time of arrival. <laughs> but, um, and while y'all bull jiving, guys, you know, get your little honeys, the rose. Get them the rose. You ain't got to wait till Christmas or their birthday. Go on and get them that rose. Because from what I hear, it's the truth. It's the truth, Ruth. <laughs> he said, laugh my ass out. Damn, Lady T. It's like that. Hey, when they build a nice product, I got something for the guys, too. But, uh... I don't know about that one. Like, I don't know. That that thing, that thing looks all the way crazy. But look. I'm going to make it easy for y'all. Ah. There you go. I don't know if that showed the link, but... You can click that link, uh, and it'll take you to the store and you know, shop till you drop. There's a lot of other good stuff there. I got remote control, uh, PS5 remote control, charge dock, docking station, but it charges. Um, I got a whole lot of other stuff. I got spy cameras over there. <laughs> Y'all go over there and niece look. Niece go visit the site. But get y'all t-shirts. The undisputed. Y'all waiting for. I know I'm gonna be wearing mine. You know. Um, uh, if y'all got pets, got uh, dog seat belts. It's not real cumbersome, like you might think. It's just one end snaps. Into the seatbelt, the other end snaps on their collar, and then that way they can't jump all around in your car. Go check it out. But in it, back to this, uh, whether or not PVC gonna lie. I don't know what's gonna happen to be honest. Big fish, uh, they may be buying themselves extra time. I've read y'all the new job that Steven Espinosa has. All y'all gotta do is go back and look at this year. This year, I know I've made videos pointing out that Steven Espinosa got a job at CBS in sports. And um, Paramount is going to absolve uh, Showtime. And they've said that so many times. And they wasn't waiting on this year. They, they made the decision in 2022, not knowing how 2023 was going to work out. But they made it based on the numbers that they had available at the time. And that's how they came up with that. But yes. Oh, Lord, I got a migraine in my eye. Like, y'all ever get a, a pain in the back of your eye? God. Ladies, <laughs> claim your rose and other great gems while they last. Claim your rose, fellas. Get your ladies this little, this little gym right here. You know, when a lady's happy, everybody's happy, right? How y'all say? Happy wife, happy life. Y'all might get some of the best cooking you ever had and all kinds of catering things done for you, you know, because she be in a good mood. <laughs> Hook your girl up. Shit, thank you later. Hey, look, shit. That and some of y'all, let's keep it, let's keep it a hundred. This is gonna do half the job. 
<laughs> this is gonna do half the job that some of y'all don't probably want to do. Some of y'all just wanna, you know, you know, poke. That's it. This will take care of everything else. Tell you, don't sleep on it. I did, but shit. There's so many people that's like, girl, shit. I don't know what you waiting on. I was like, damn, let me go in here and buy mine. So, mine's on the way. <laughs> I bought a lot of stuff on that site, though. I bought the spy camera. Love it. It's Wi-Fi. I bought, I got a portable printer on that joint. A portable printer. Um, I got that. Um, put it in your hands. And um, it's hooked up to your phone. So, like, when you're on your phone, you want to print something out. And then when it come out on the sticker, the the, the the tape, you can peel the back off the uh, the, the paper, and it sticks. It's, it has some kind of adhesive. Um, you know, I bought the uh, little food processor thing. They cut up everything real good. Oh, my God. It cut prep work down and have and the Christmas stuff in there. You know, I know that they don't normally sell Christmas things in July or June, but I do. So go in there and check it out. Anyway, uh, that's all I have. Unless somebody else have anything, I'm going to put this uh, link in the chat just in case. But that's all I have. So the heavyweights, shout outs to the Saudis for taking over. Um, hopefully they do a good job and they are thinking about the fighters and they showed that by sh saying that uh that they were going to move the fight that fury and um Usyk was supposed to have to january to give all of the fighters all of the top heavyweights a chance to recover because we don't know who's going to be matched up um and uh they pushing the fury and Usyk fight back to february um, Wilder has proclaimed that um, Andy Ruiz need to stop listening to his daddy. No different than a lot of people say that about T.O. and his daddy. But stop listening to your daddy because your daddy talking you out of some good stuff. And then you ain't going to have nobody to blame but yourself because you can't afford to be missing opportunities because they, gonna, they are far and in between. So uh, <clears throat> head over to Ask Me T. 51.com ladies claim your rose fellas get it for them and you know shop till you drop other than that i got nothing else and in the words of pamela james peace <laughs>